everyone. Today in math class, we work on drawing the coordinate plane and plotting the points on that plane. And to get started, we had to realize that you have to first find your point of origin. And from there, you will draw your horizontal x axis and your vertical y axis through that point of origin. Before you can plot any of the points, we have to take a look at our ordered pairs and sort through the range of our x coordinate and sort through the range of our y coordinate to find what a good scale would be. And we also learned that it's possible that our x and our y axes could have different scales. So let's go ahead and try it with this example. You can see that we have a set of ordered pairs. And the first thing I want to do is find the center and go ahead and set up my y. One, two, three, four, five. And my x axis. So I've got my point of origin. I can see that I have five units to the left, to the right, and up and down that I'm having to work with. And I'm going to have to make sure that each of these numbers that I have in my ordered pairs are going to fit in there. So I first want to just do a little prep work on the side and say, all right, you know, I need to look at what my range of my x, and then I'll go through and I'll look at what is my range of the y coordinates. So as I go through and check, oh, that's not good, too dark. Sometimes it's just easier to have it highlighted so I can just focus in on that x coordinate. So I want to get my range so I have an idea of what would be a good number. So my smallest number of my smallest value is actually negative 25. And that range goes through my highest value. It looks like it's going to be 20. So I want to make sure that I have enough points that's going to cover negative 25 and 20. So since I have five spaces to the left and to the right, I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my scale up so that each unit is going to be worth 5. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And I'll do the same on the left, negative 5, negative 10, negative 15, negative 20, negative 25. I have to do the same for my y values. Now, up there right now, my y values are not highlighted, so if they stand out, I have 2 tenths, 8 tenths, 4 tenths, and negative 4 tenths, and negative 8 tenths. So they're evens, so I think that counting by 2 tenths would probably be a good idea. And they're all greater than zero, but less than one whole. So thinking about that, I probably could have each unit equaling two tenths. I can write it as a fraction, or I could write it as a decimal. So I'm going to have this be two tenths, four tenths, six tenths, eight tenths, and one whole. Down here, negative two tenths, negative four tenths, negative six tenths, negative eight tenths, and negative one whole. So I have my scale. Now we're ready to go ahead and plot those points on my scale. So 10 and 2 tenths. Remember, every single time we plot on our ordered pair, it's always x before y. So starting at the point of origin, I move to the right 10, and I'm going to move up 2 tenths, and I'm going to plot that point. I'm going to call this point A and have it there. My next coordinate, I'm going to call it point B, is a negative 25 and a positive 8 tenths. So starting at the point of origin, I'm going to move to the left, negative 25, and then up 8 tenths. Right here is my point B. I'll label this one C, 
So my x is at the point of origin, which means do not move. And my y coordinate is a negative 4 tenths. So staying at 0, move straight down, negative 4 tenths. There is letter C. My next point is 20 and 1, two positives. So starting at the point of origin, I move to the right 20, and I move up one hole. One hole happens to be all the way here, and there's point D. Last one, we'll call this point E, is negative 5 and negative 8 tenths. So starting at the point of origin, I'm going to move to the left, negative 5, and down negative 8 tenths, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, or sorry, 2, 4, 6, 8 tenths, right here. And I'm at letter E. So looking through, I'm just double checking, make sure I did it right. And once you're all set, you can just always look through and I can see that point A is two positives. So it should be in quadrant one. And point B is a negative positive, which is part of quadrant two. Point C is a positive negative, which would be in quadrant, no, not in quadrant at all. It would be actually on the y-axis because there's a zero. Uh, point D is a positive positive, which is, again, in quadrant one. And point E is a negative negative. Point E should be found in quadrant three. So just a quick check, and that's what we worked on in class today. So good luck with your practice, and make a difference today.